I am Stefano. And I'm Sasha. And we are traveling in our self converted shuttle bus. Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Today we're gonna walk through our electric system. Uh, we're gonna explain you what are the components and how it works and um, what else? Um, our, I'll talk you through the general electric system that we have. We found this one of the hardest parts of our DIY shuttle bus build. So we wanted to create so a, a video that we would want to have during mm -hmm. the build. So we're going to tell you everything that we did um, and why. So first of all, for our system, we have mostly Renogy products. We love Renogy as a brand. We found them very helpful. If we ever called them to troubleshoot a problem, they would answer the phone within five minutes and help. So we cannot recommend them more. Um, we have their solar panels, solar charge, uh, solar charge controller, controller, and their inverter. Um, and we have both DC and AC systems on our shuttle bus. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. It helps support our channel and subscribe for future videos. So our electric system is located inside this seat. We're going to show you what's inside and how everything works. First of all, we take the table off just to have a little bit more of clearance. And here we go. It looks a little bit scary, but we're gonna go through every single items and how it works exactly. All right, so first we're gonna explain uh, how we did all the electric system, and then we're gonna go in each component and everything like, and all the connection. So it's really important that you guys map out uh, what the electric system is gonna be. So you decide where you wanna locate your batteries, where you wanna locate your electric system, where you wanna locate your USB point and all the light switches. So that's what we did first before even putting the wall out. Mm -hmm. So you wanna know exactly where the switch is gonna be and all the rest. And then you start to run all the wiring. Um, so for us, this was the center control of the electric system. So we went from the other side of the bus, from these switches, from everything else, like we ran we ran wires inside this box. Um, then you can keep going with the rest of the building and come back on the electric system. But first of all, it's wiring, especially if you wanna have invisible wiring, meaning behind the walls. First of all, disclaimer, we are not electricians. We did have an electrician check this over and assist the, us with this. So we really recommend that you do as well to prevent any accidents like fires in your bus. We are going to pop a little diagram of all of our wiring and everything in the description as well that we would find super helpful. Um, first of all, we're gonna start with our solar panels on our roof. We bought a 400 watt premium solar kit from Renogy and then we added another 100 watt panel. So we have five panels on the roof. Each one is 100 watts and they run through this wall and the wiring runs down into the solar charge controller. We got a MPPT solar charge controller from Renogy in the kit. This is a better solar charge controller than say a PWM type and ours is 40A amps and it um, can handle a little bit over 500 watts of solar. So we have two power systems in the bus. We have DC power, which is 12 volts and runs through a fuse box. And we have AC power, which is like your home electronics system and that has outlets and that runs through the inverter and a circuit breaker box. Um, so the inverter you need if you have AC power, but you do not need it if you're only doing DC. DC, we ran all of our lights, our switches, our rooftop vent fan, and our USB charging points through DC power. It uses less power. And AC power, we really only reserved for our hot water heater for our shower and um, an outlet so that we can plug in appliances as well as our apartment style mini fridge. So we have a 3000 watt inverter, which was probably overkill. This is also from Renogy and our AC power runs through this. We know all of this information are 
hard to take on and it could be really stressful the only thing that we can say is just like don't rush stuff take your times go through every size of cable every size of fuses that you need to do and don't try to do everything in one go maybe just go one day and then go the next day pause it like because all of these things are like especially for people that have never done before it could be really overwhelming so you know you're gonna to you're gonna go through this we went through this it's normal just like keep going and eventually figure it out what's like the best thing to do what we did was work on our electric system until we got frustrated and then we would go work on an easier project in the bus and then come back to the electric system when our brains were fresh so you could always start in the morning on the electric system when you're not tired and then go do something else to kind of blow some steam off <laughs> yeah if we did it you can do it <laughs> so we have two 200 to um, 100 amp. to 100 amp, amp. Uh, lithium battery one is located right under the bus on the outside there is a little box and one is located in this other space so first it's really important that you can you place the battery as close as possible to the electric system um, the wiring from the battery to the inverter are really thick it's actually this here I don't know if you can see it's really thick and it's quite expensive so you wouldn't uh, have those battery far away from the electric system because it's going to be really expensive to connect you them. are going to need a bigger wires because the inverter needs more power to run so we are running um, the positive and the black the positive again run into a master switch uh, this allows you to work in the system without unplugging the cable from the battery you just simply like switching on and off and once this is off you don't have power in the system anymore from the master switch you go in a fuse it's the same concept of the other fuse if there's a, there is any malfunction the fuse will prevent the battery to be damaged and then both positive and negatives run inside the inverter so we mounted the solar panels on the roof and there are two cables that come down from the solar panels and they go into the solar charge controller. There's the space for a positive, which is the red, and then a negative. So you put the positive in the first hole and the negative in the second hole. There are icons on the solar charge controller as well. That hooks up the solar panels to the charge controller. And then there are also two more cables coming out of the solar charge controller, a positive and a negative. There are again icons there. And these go into our bus bars. We have a positive bus bar and a negative bus bar. The bus bars are really important for connecting like multiple positives and multiple negatives into one connection. For example, this connects multiple to allow one connection to our DC fuse box. We have connected the DC fuse box, which runs all of our lighting, our USB switches, um, our water pump and our rooftop vent fan. We have connected a positive from the positive bus bar to the top of the DC fuse box and a negative cable from the negative bus bar to the DC fuse box. We have labeled all of our fuses, which is really handy. And the front of the fuse box comes off. All of these fuses, you do need to calculate the load in order to determine what size fuse to use. And if a fuse blows, you just pull this out and replace it. It's super simple. All of these cables on the side are running to our um, lights, our switches, and our outlets. And we have positive on the sides and negative running to the bottom. I'm now going to explain our AC system, which we have this breaker box, we have the inverter, we have another bus bar, and we have uh, another fuse. So the AC system is your home power, and the difference between AC and DC is that AC does have a ground cable. So we have a ground cable going down into the chassis of the bus. Now we have placed each outlet, we have three outlets in the bus, on an individual breaker to avoid throwing the breaker. We have our hot water heater, our fridge, and our miscellaneous kitchen outlet. Um, and we have connected the breaker to the bus bar. So there are three cables coming out of the breaker box into the bus bar. 
Um, and then the bus bar has a line that goes to the fuse. Now these cables, even though they're black, they are positive and they are 14 AWG size. So we have run them to the bus bar. We have the black one because that was a cheaper bus bar mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of the red. And then we run the positive to a fuse. This is to fuse the inverter and protect it because it's expensive. And then we've run a positive from the inverter, um, from the fuse into the inverter. The inverter also has um, space for a ground and a negative as well. Um, we have run the ground into one side of the breaker box and the negative into the other side of the breaker box. Now, all of the um, outlets run through these white cables. These white cables are really cool because they have the three wires inside the positive, the negative, and the ground. All of the ground from these white cables run into the bus bar, and then we have one main ground running from the bus bar to the inverter. Same as all of the live wires from these um, cables go into the top of the breaker box on a individual bus bar in here, and then there is one live wire running to the inverter connecting the them all. black wire goes into the bottom of the breaker which connects the breaker to the bus bar via these here so a good feature about Renergy solar charger controller is that it has this little small bluetooth device so with this little device you can have an app on your phone that let you monitoring like anything that it's happening so that if you are away or if you're just sitting in bed and you just want to check like uh, anything related to the solar charger controller or the solar panel you can just do it on your phone the battery that we bought as well uh mustang battery they also have like a, an app on the phone where you can just check the percentage of the battery so you can see like 90 percent 50 percent whatever the battery is it, it is you at. can also check the temperature of the battery and other things as well we really just only check the percentage um just to know how much yeah. power we have left and how much we can use we find that so handy uh, another function that Renogy has is related to the inverter so through this cable you have a switch on and off uh, so if you want to switch the inverter off for any reason you can just do it through the little switch switch and that switches the whole AC system off so we'll do that if we want to save power or if we want to defrost the freezer or something like that we hope you found this video helpful and informational we want to make videos that we could not find on YouTube for those who are building their bus or their van project um, please give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to our channel to support us. We really like providing educational content um, because we know how hard it is doing a bus build, how scary it is, and how um, yeah. it feels like it, it was for us. It is hopeless. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.